Welcome to the networking seminar entitled The Importance of Networking. We are going to be discussing how you can work your network. What do you think that means to you? Nothing? Absolutely nothing? Well, hopefully by the time you leave here today, it will mean everything to you. What is networking? Networking is the art and science of building professional relationships, but few of us are naturals at it. How many of us actually feel as though we are natural networkers? Right? Well, that depends on where you're classified as far as personalities go. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Sometimes those have a big impact on whether or not you are good at networking, right? Right? Introverts are people that what? Stay to themselves. They're usually very quiet. They don't like to talk to people. And extroverts are what? The opposite, right? They actually go out, they mingle, they talk to people, they spark up random conversations at any given time, right? That's me. How many of you? That's you. Okay, good. You said that we all know this, right? So, because some people are not natural extroverts, or some are not natural networkers, as we like to call them today, we've come up with some of the reasons why you should make yourself a natural extrovert or a natural networker. Okay? First of all, you're building human relations skills. Those are the skills that you build when you get to talk to people, you get to learn about what's going on, you get to communicate with others, right? Because that's a big part of business. True? Also, you get to expand your horizons. You get to learn new stuff about new people every day. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Yay! Yay. Also, <laughs> sometimes you just get to talk about yourself and showcase your skills. True? Right? How many of us love to talk about ourselves? Everybody's a little narcissistic, right? Absolutely. So, when we're talking about that, it leads you to lead people to other places where you can showcase yourself. Down here, there's a website. Go ahead and open that. Uh oh, who's that? Uh oh. Uh oh. There we go. That is my website that I get to tell people about when I start to network with them, right? They get to learn more about me when they go to this website, but how do they know that this website exists? Word of mouth. Word of mouth and networking, right? Also, not only can we direct them to the places that they need to be, we also get to focus on some of these other things that are very important to business. One, we get to expand our client basis. Meaning what? We can tell people that we are here to do business. Businesses go out of business, why? Because most people don't know they even exist. It's like promoting and marketing, right? When you're networking. You get to talk to clients, you get to talk to potential clients. You get to talk to people who don't even know they're thinking about being a client. Right? Because that's what networking is about. Also, you get to develop business partnerships. Do you know how many partnerships I've had with people that I met in college that I still do business with today? When I ran my own business successfully for five years in Arizona, I had a friend of mine that was one of my partners in a business project that I did in my Business 100 class that still did my taxes for me later. That's all because of networking. And she didn't even charge me. You want to know what she charged me? Lunch. <laughs> right? I want to come with facts like that. <laughs> Absolutely. So that helps you build your business and also save you a little bit of money. The next one is finding a better career. You know that most jobs are obtained by who you know and not what you know. Right? What is the percentage rate? Close. About 75% of jobs are obtained from who you know and not what you know. And those skills come from networking, talking to people, letting them know that you're actually looking for employment. How many of you tell people that you're looking for employment? Or are we embarrassed? <laughs> Even when I'm not looking for employment, sometimes I'm telling people I'm looking for employment just to see what's out there, right? <laughs> also, you get to build lifelong relationships. You get to have those relationships I was talking about from college. You get to be able to talk to people on the long term, right? building friendships. I'm still friends with everybody that was in my networking circle from college. How many of you think that you'll be friends with the circle that you have right now, five years from now? Pretty impressive, right? That's all part of networking. And this is why you should be networking, because what happens? Okay. 
there's some benefits and costs to this. What are the networking benefits that you get? We talked about building those relationships and building that rapport and building your client base, right? But here are some of the benefits and costs. First of all, it doesn't cost you anything to open your mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But when you do, you get the benefits of improving your sales and your customer service skills, right? Because you're working on interacting and talking with people. You also get to work on relationship management. Networks are built by building relationships, not just taking someone's contact information and never using it. It is always following up again and saying, hey, how are you doing? By the way, did you ever graduate? By the way, how is that new degree program that you're doing or that certificate program, right? Because people are constantly changing, so you need to be constantly building relationships with them as you're doing so, and that's one of the benefits. The next one, again, is employment opportunities. We just talked about that, correct? Yeah. Then we've got building outgoing personalities. There's, we're talking about those introverts again, right? You need to work on building yourself as an outgoing personality. Very few jobs where you work independently. There's always going to be a time where you need to work in a team or you need to network with someone, right? Because that's how companies are built, especially this day and age, right? Also, you get to meet new people. We just said that. How exciting is it to meet new people every day? It's exciting. Right? Sparking up conversations, those are benefits that you get to meet because that's building your network. Also, you just get to work on your basic communication skills. Closed mouths don't get fed. So you get to talk to people, that's excellent. Remember, high risk, high reward, low risk, low reward. Meaning if you don't speak, you don't know what's happening. If you do speak, there's a chance you can have a great opportunity ahead of you, right? So, what are your networking connections? We have three different types, and if you don't know where to start networking, the first one is social media. How many have social media? All of you in here back, <laughs> right? You cannot have, not have social media. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is your Instagram. What's on your Instagram feed that you can use to network? Right? <coughs> Linking people back to comments or articles that are important. Right? Not just pictures of your selfies. Right? <coughs> That's not what Instagram is for, even though we use it for that. What about Facebook? That is a social media network. Right? What does that word media mean? <laughs> it's like news! You're telling people all of the news that you want them to know about you. It is not Dear Diary. You don't tell them how you feel for that day and what you ate for breakfast. It should be used for networking purposes, right? Also, your LinkedIn. LinkedIn accounts are very appropriate, right? It's all about your networking LinkedIn. People know your skills, they can endorse them, right? It tells people your strengths and weaknesses. Employers can go on there and check you out, right? And here's a new one, Job R. How many of you have heard of this one? Job R is actually a brand new app that allows you to apply for jobs by either swiping left or swiping right. Just that easy. Saves you a lot of time, right? But you can also build a network inside of that app where it allows you to build people that send you jobs so that way you can have a better chance for employment opportunities. I like that. Right? It's very convenient. Especially for those of us who get sick of filling out those 15 page applications, right? Nope, you don't have to fill it out. You just go left and right. If you want to apply, and it applies for you automatically when you swipe it right. It's the, it's the latest thing for millennials, because most of us don't want to take that time anymore, right? We want things immediately. Expedited. Your educational network connections. We've got your professors. Myself, right? I know a lot of people in the community. How many students come to me and say, can you help me find this job? Do you know if they're hiring over here? Tons of you, right? Absolutely. So, <laughs> or do you know where I can find an internship? So when you're networking every day, you show up. Also, your classmates. I know you can't read, it's kind of small, but it's all right. Your classmates, talking to other people in your class. I've had students that have helped other students find internships because they turned one down, and now they know it's available because they were talking in class, right? Then we've got our teams and groups. Anytime you put in a project, Anytime you have to work in a team, that means you're building a network. 
True, some of those members you don't want to keep with you, right? You delete immediately after the project is over. <laughs> but the rest of them, you kind of what? You hold on to and you put them in your network and you say, I'm going to utilize this person one day. They had a strength in PowerPoint. They had a strength in Excel. That's how you build your networks with your classmates or teams. Also, clubs. The Business Professionals Club. We're building networks in here, right? We've got treasurers. We've got presidents, vice presidents, operations managers. They all have each other's number. They all contact each other when they need something, right? Absolutely. That's a strong unity. ABG, honor clubs. Those things, right? Absolutely. So those are how you build your educational networks. Be on the lookout for that. And in career, we've got your colleagues, right? It's okay to make relationships in networking circles. Maybe not so much strong friendships if that's not what you're into, especially if you're an introvert, but it is very good to make a networking connection with your colleagues. Also, your supervisors. They want you to succeed as much as you want to succeed. They know when promotions are coming up. They know when advancement opportunities are coming, right? So talk to them. Let them know that you're looking to relocate or you're looking to advance in your position, right? So they can keep you in mind when they get ready to start promoting. Also vendors. People coming from the outside in, right? They see you doing something that they want to do. You can network with them, pull them in, or vice versa. The same thing goes with customers. They're watching you serve them. So they're seeing your customer service skills. How many jobs do you think are, are obtained by somebody watching you in action? Yes. Absolutely, right? So your customers are a great networking pool. One of the things as a job developer in New York City, that was how I survived. I mean, I was new to Syracuse, right, mm -hmm. to New York City, and I was a job developer, got a job at Black Best for Social Justice in the city. And they said, um, let's talk to so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. so I just started building a network with other job developers, and that's how we were able to change jobs. Oh, how many, 10 people? Absolutely. Was able to so that's people. just how you do it. But how do you start the process? For those of us who are still hesitant and don't know the steps, well, here are a couple for you. The first one is to introduce yourself. You introduce yourself by your professional appearance, right? It's not what you say, but how you say it. Mm -hmm. And how you say it is what you're wearing, mm -hmm. how you present yourself, your attitude, right? Your tone, your demeanor, your posture, right? Mm -hmm. All of these things go into your professional appearance. And if we want to talk just a little bit about professional dress, of that introduction, there is actually a program here that we launched, the Business Professionals Club, that's called SWITCH, and that successful wardrobe increases the chance of hiring. That means that you get to actually, what? See the benefits of introducing yourself in a professional dress to employers because that's how you get introduced and that's how you get employment opportunities, right? Yeah. Also, your online presence. You know they meet you before you meet them. <laughs> Absolutely, right? Oh, yeah. Because Google is a wonderful thing. They are looking at Google, they're searching for Facebooks, they're seeing what your profile pictures are. Even if they can't get into your page, your profile picture is still available. So what does that introductory photo say about you? A lot. A lot. So make sure that before you start to network and send people to those social media sites, that it is an appropriate introduction of yourself before you do so. The next one is your elevator pitch. How many of you have ever heard of an elevator pitch? Okay, that's your 30 second introduction, right? Because an elevator ride is very quick. Well, unless you're on this elevator. <laughs> then it's like 20, 30 minutes. But no, you smile, you say hello, and you give a brief introduction of yourself. Keep it very professional, keep it very business. You don't want to talk about anything too personal, right? Because that's something at a later date. But when we're talking about elevator pitches, make sure that that tone that you say it in is actually a great introduction of yourself. Because guess what? We don't have a choice on some situations. We don't do social media. It's just how well do you do social media, right? Next, after we've introduced ourselves, have we made an actual impression, right? Because we can introduce ourselves and make two types of impressions. What are they? Good or, good or bad, <laughs> positive or negative. So how do we make a good one? We start with our brand. What 
is our brand, that is that trademark, that is that logo, that entity that you are. All of my students know that what? You each individually are a brand. Mm -hmm. How you carry yourself, how you represent yourself, right? The equity that you put into yourself. You're building equity into your brand right now. How? Education. By going to college and bettering yourselves, you are building your brand equity. The next thing you're doing is you're going to leave an impression by telling them your personal accountabilities. What do you think I mean by that? What you're accountable for. What are you accountable for? What have you done? What are you doing now? What are your goals in the future? What have you set yourself personally accountable for in life? Yes? Mm -hmm. And that shows them that you are ready for a career. If you can set personal goals, you can pretty sure set professional goals, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same entity. Obviously, one should be more invested than the other, right? No? Yes? Maybe? They actually link. Why? Because some of our personal goals require professional money to actually see through, right? Okay, just making sure. And also, you want to make an impression by just keeping in, in mind that everything is performance-based. What is performance-based? I'm introducing that to you today because it is like a light camera action approach to life. That means you are always on. Just because you network with somebody and they left the room, you never know who they left behind to still watch you. Yes? Right. So when we're talking about this performance-based lifestyle, we're talking about be ready, stay ready, stay on, stay appropriate. I have so many students that say, nobody's watching me today. It's okay if I wear my sweatpants. <laughs> you don't know who's in this building. You don't know who's hiring. You don't know what guest speaker is popping up, right? So when we're talking about staying ready, you have to stay in professional mode in order to make a positive first impression at all times. How do you also build your network? You build it by actually having a strong contact. Meaning, how do they get a hold of you? You've met this person, you've made an impression. Do you just walk away? No, no. it's like meeting the, the most fabulous person of your life, your soulmate, and never getting their number. Oh, no. <laughs> right? Heartbreaking, right? Of course. It's like, what did I just do? You missed the golden opportunity. You missed that golden opportunity, absolutely. So when we're talking about where do we leave them, you leave them with your business card. How many of you in here have a business card? None of you. Good. Some of you. So we've got two out of a couple. So what we're talking about today is how do you build that card and make it leave an impression long after you've walked out. First, you want to make sure you have some contact information on it. Basic name, appropriate email, and a working phone number with no ring back tone. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yes. And a voicemail that is appropriate in case we ring and you don't answer. Also, the format. You've got to make it pop, but make it pop professionally. I have seen so many business cards where I'm like, what do they do again? Why do I have this card in my wallet? It goes in the trash. It doesn't say anything. If you're a graphic artist, put that on your card, but make it pop. If you're a graphic artist and you have a basic black and white card, it's a, time. I'm, it's a waste of time. It shows me none of your graphic arts. Right? So when we're talking about making it pop professionally, make it stand out for what you need it to stand out for. And here's the last thing. Timing. Again, it's like walking out without getting that number. Timing is everything. Remember I said stay ready? Yes, you want to stay ready because timing is everything. Make sure your cards are with you. What good do they do you in your trunk? None. What good do they do you at home on a shelf? Nothing. Keep them on you. Keep yourself ready. Also, make sure that you're passing them out at the right times. You don't just meet somebody and say, boom, <laughs> here's my card. You might want to make sure that person actually has a need for it. Right? Every contact's not a good contact, we know that. Right? That's, there's a lot of do not answers in my phone. So yes. So when we're talking about networking appropriately, you want to make sure that this is a good networking opportunity for you to be able to exchange this information.
because let's face it, you have to work your network and let your network work for you. Because at the end of the day, again, it's not what you know, but it's who you know, right? And it's all about building that network and it's all about building that contact list that you can go back to at a later date that's gonna help you be successful, not only in life, but in your careers as well, right? Yes. And since most of us in here said that we do not have a business card, at the end of today, we're gonna actually pass out a three by five note card for you that you're going to make your practice business card on. And then you're gonna give it to us and we're gonna see exactly what your long lasting um, impression would be for us. So that's an activity that we're gonna do at the end, which is coming up very soon. I know a, a lot of you are like, when is the end? The end is soon, not near, <laughs> but soon. Uh, so any questions or comments about what we covered today? Um, business cards. Yes. Because um, spending 10 years in Japan, you have to, um, there's a, what do they call a misha. Mm -hmm. And you have to, there's an etiquette. When yes. you give your business card, you, you know, you, I have it, and you have it, and yes. we exchange. Mm -hmm. You just don't pop it out. Absolutely not. That's not just in Japan. <laughs> That's in Syracuse and Houston, Texas, and everywhere else that I've lived, right? Any other comments or questions? No? Well, thank you.